Sound check one, sound check one. Sound check one, sound check one. Let us join in our prayer of healing. When Jesus is grown, he will walk through Galilee, Samaria, Judea, and Jerusalem, preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand and healing the sick. When the church gathered in the years after Christ's resurrection, they fed the hungry, cared for the least of these in their midst, and prayed for healing. Let us pray for the healing of our loved ones, our neighbors, our world, and ourselves. Gracious God, we gather in the name of Jesus, as the church has done from the beginning, and we come as we are. We ask your Spirit to be with us and with all your children in the ways that we need. Where we are hurting, Lord, be our healing. Where we are grieving, Lord, be our comfort. Where we are weak, Lord, be our strength. Where we are not brave, Lord, be our courage. As we are tempted, Lord, be our shield. As we are wronged, Lord, be our consolation. As we are confused, Lord, be our clarity. As we are despairing, Lord, be our hope. When we have broken faith, Lord, help us repair. When we have harmed others, Lord, help us to heal. When we have let go of our discipleship, Lord, call us back. When we have followed the world, Lord, recenter us in you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Good morning. Today's reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38 and 46 through 55. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of your Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my favor. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May God bless the reading and the hearing. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word now dwell within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. Many of you probably know the perennial Christmas favorite, Mary Did You Know. I appreciate this song for a number of reasons. It is all kinds of catchy. You get that tune stuck in your head, you're going to have it in your head all day. It offers a meditative feel. It's closer to O Little Town of Bethlehem than it is to Joy, the, joy to the World. And it takes seriously the idea of Mary pondering all these things in her heart. It also reminds us in its words that Christmas is not the pinnacle of the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus, whom we know as Christ. And it lends itself to that blending of choral voices and has that note of lament in it even as it rejoices. And I love all of those things in my music. I can get behind all of those things. But the song also offers us a glimpse into one of the problems we have as a church. One of the problems many of Jesus' followers have. We prefer what we think is in the Bible or what someone has told us is in the Bible, or what we've come to understand is in the Bible by osmosis or some other means, than what is actually in the Bible. I'm going to make the dangerous suggestion that what is actually in the Bible, however difficult or unseemly or hazardous it may be, is better than what we think is in there, or what we've been told is in there, or what we've come to understand by osmosis is in there. Mary, did you know what Jesus was going to be about? The answer is yes. The angel Gabriel came to her and told her, He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. This is revolutionary language. And I say that not to mean revolutionary like, ooh, this new computer is revolutionary. It's revolutionary like tearing tyrants from their thrones. It's not revolutionary like, ooh, the controls on this new car have revolutionized driving. No, it's revolutionary like lifting up the poor and turning the world upside down. It's that kind of revolutionary. And Mary gets it. She responds from her heart and her soul and she sings. Did we catch what she sang? Mary hears what God is going to do and she sings a song of praise, but she sings it in the past tense. Here's what God is going to do for you, and she sings praise to God in the past tense. The Lord has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy. According to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, because God has looked upon the lowly servant and has already scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, has already brought down the powerful from their thrones, has already lifted up the lowly, God has already filled the hungry with good things, has already sent the rich away, empty. God has already helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors. This song is a marvelously Jewish expression 
And I say that because what it does, it ties hope to memory. It takes praise for what God is doing now, what is just now coming into being, and ties it to remembrance of God's covenant, God's faithfulness, God's acts of salvation in the past. Hope is tied to memory throughout the Bible. When people in the Bible pray for their present day, they recall God's saving acts in the past. When they need hope for the day, they remember what God has already done. Episcopal priest and woman, a scholar, Will Gaffney, reminds the church that Mary's song of praise tells us God is enough. God is enough. What God has done is enough. We're facing rising tides of fascism in the world. In our own country, in Europe, Asia, South America, Africa, one election does not change that. We have fascism on the rise all over the globe. Can we create a world that protects those who are vulnerable and does not operate on the manipulation of fear and treating some people as better than others? Maybe. If we listen to God who has already done this time and time again, for God is enough. We're facing ongoing problems of race and privilege and systems of injustice in our own country, in our own state, in our own county, in our own towns. Can we build a society, a way of interacting with one another that does not put one above another, does not privilege some at the expense of others? Maybe. If we listen to God... For God has done this time and time again. And God is enough. The earth cries out because we have treated creation and all its bounty as commodities and not gifts of a loving creator. We have sown the wind and are reaping the whirlwind, sometimes literally. Can we turn this around and become healers of the land and stewards of creation? Maybe. If we listen to God who has done this time and again. And God is enough. In our own lives, we've been weighed down by grief, pushed past our ability to cope by health concerns for ourselves and for others for loved ones, for neighbors, by pandemics and indifference. Can God heal us, comfort us, strengthen us, bring us through this time? Yes. Yes, God can. Because God has done this time and again, and God is enough. So what do we do? What do you and I do in a time such as this? We remember what God has done. We remember what God has done and what we have done when we have followed God. What has been possible when we have said yes to God. And we advocate for laws and policies that protect and do not harm We contact our elected officials and we hold them accountable to the common good. We press for the world which God has given us glimpses of, a world where the hungry are fed and the lowly are lifted up and the brokenhearted are healed and the land is gift and not dumping grounds. We remember and we praise God for what God has done and we advocate for more beds, for inpatient care, of those struggling with addiction. And we 
lobby insurance. We lobby legislators. We make it so that they cover not just the time it takes to get the poison out of the bloodstream, but also the time it takes to not be dumped back out on the street as a hungry addict. We remember and we praise God for what God has done. And we look for ways of supporting other people's health, other people's healing, and maybe even our own health and healing by advocating that we take better care of those in need of mental health supports. We take care of those who need medical support but cannot afford their medicine. We find ways to end the stigmas around neurodiversity and mental illness. And we make it so that healing is common and not something we have to go bankrupt for. We remember and we praise God for what God has done and we check in on one another by listening and being God's compassion to each other so that we too become part of how God lifts up the lowly and feeds the hungry and protects the vulnerable. What do we do? We remember. Like Mary, we remember. And we give praise to God. And we do the work. We take care of one another. We remember God and what God has done in our Advent wreath lighting, in our worship, in our devotions, in our table graces, in our morning and evening prayers. We remember. Like Mary, we remember and we give thanks to God. In our daily living, in our work, in our chores, in our rest, in our recreation, we remember. Like Mary, we remember and we give thanks to God. For God has done all these things time and time again. And God is enough. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Pray with me, please. Gracious God, in our waiting of Advent, we are waiting for so many things. For vaccine, for good news, for restoration of health, for healing, for hope, for financial stability, for those things that weigh on our hearts and minds that keep us up at night or wake us up at 3 a.m. Help us to put all of these things into your hands. Our hopes, our griefs, our loves, our doubts, our faith. Help us to turn all of these over to you. For you receive us as we are. You receive our stuff as it is. Lord, be with us in our waiting. And come quickly with that Christmas promise of the fullness of your love revealed in strange and exciting and terrifying ways and yet coming with the message that this is good news and do not be afraid. Be with us, Lord, this day and the days ahead. Be with us, Lord, in the ways we most deeply need. This we pray in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught, the prayer that begins, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. The dawn of hope rests on the horizon with beams of love reaching our doubting hearts. We celebrate the newness of this season, waiting to see how the Christ will appear in our world. Even in our despair, a glimmer of hope reaches into our twilight, beckoning us to breathe and wait. Our story tells us that the Christ child whose birth we anticipate will one day sit at tables with strangers and friends, building relationships filled with love and grace. We see this as he fed the multitude, turned water into wine, and ate with dear ones the night before his death. We remember he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. Eat in remembrance of me, he said to them. He took the cup and in his blessing reminded them that when they sipped of the fruit of the vine, they did so in remembrance of him. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, light of the world, the word of life, no matter how we know Christ or by what name we call him. He is our hope, 
our peace, our joy, and our love. May the Spirit bless us in these elements as we commune to remember him. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Amen. The cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Let us pray together for the nourishment of spirit, mind, and body, for hope that we begin to see, and for comfort from the Prince of Peace. We share our gratitude, gracious God. Encourage us in these shortened days through the long nights of this season. May your hope carry us until dawn arrives again. Amen.
My friends, I invite you to join us for worship on Christmas Eve. Beginning at 5 p.m., the video of worship will be available on YouTube, and it's available anytime thereafter. So if you're part of the 11 o'clock crowd, you can worship at 11 o'clock. And if you're part of that five o'clock crowd and then you get on with family dinner, you can do that too. We have a little more flexibility this year, not that we asked for it, but we do. So I invite you to join us on our YouTube channel on Christmas Eve, beginning at 5 p.m. or any time thereafter, there will be lessons and carols as well as a message of Christmas. And we will conclude with the singing of Silent Night. And I invite you, as we did when we did the Christmas caroling, I invite you to sing along however you want to to the, the carols and the lessons and carols, to Silent Night. Join us in the joy of this season. Thank you. My friends, in this Advent season coming into our celebration of Christmas, I invite you to let God comfort your heart, bring you good news, and I invite you to remember the words of the angels. Do not be afraid. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you. May you always know God's peace. Amen and amen.